Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. I'm with my buddy Angus and Matt. We're out exploring some public land. We're gonna do some ATV and some fishing, some biking, a little bit of everything. So come join us and uh, stay tuned because we're gonna show you how we got here and what comes next. Thanks for watching. So Angus and I are meeting my buddy Matt, who came up with his van. And we're meeting at uh, our local kind of truck stop on the highway. Here we are. Hey, what's going on? There you go. You might recognize Matt from some of my videos. We went ice climbing and I've done some mountain bike trips. Probably the worst mountain bike trip ever, actually. That's on the video, too. <laughs> so we came from different directions. So we met on the highway here and we're going to um, take a look at the map and start heading out and plotting where we're going to be sleeping tonight. So the forecast before we left called for some thunderstorms, like 90% chance, which is really odd because the sky looks pretty good right now. Mostly blue with some nice, uh, nice puffy white clouds. So we're going to set up the awning that Matt brought just in case, because if we don't set it up, sure enough, we'll be getting the thunderstorms. You want to do the fire, Scott? Probably just, probably right there would be good. Here's the uh, here's the hitch. This was a three this was a three quarter inch drop. So that's what I had on originally, and uh, popped into that Princess Auto and bought a straight straight one. And uh, the trailer sits perfectly now in the truck, especially with the truck loaded. Um, so that was that. There's some straps we needed to buy. First thing we got to do is chalk up the tires. Level Eddie. Van life compared to trailer life. Is that like, hey, you're already set up? Yeah. Actually, that's good though. That's true. Yeah. There's pros and cons to both. <laughs> I'm still setting up. Matt's already got his beers. <laughs> He's drinking. Okay, score one for Matt. <laughs> This is a homemade uh, little device that goes on top of the diving bag. So when I hook up my wench, the wire runs through the middle. Instead of scratching up, instead of scratching up the handle because the wire would run down the middle, I just built this, and it keeps the wire off there. So now I put the ratchet straps on just to keep these in place. Especially with the uneven sand. It's, uh, it's more important than ever to make sure everything's locked and secure. Okay. 
Okay. All right. So I'm gonna have some fun with this. I got Angus and Matt who are really anxious to help out, which is great. And this is a lot of fun having uh, some friends around. And uh, I got some stuff to do. So they offered to put the fire pit together and do some other stuff. So I'm not gonna tell them how to do it. See if they can figure it out. So I think that piece, it is the thing. that it? Yeah, you guys got it. That's it. Oh, I thought it'd be more to it than that. Yeah. So I'll give you a rundown of where everything is here, okay? Because you guys feel free to use everything. So in here, chainsaw. There's uh, safety stuff, Angus. Uh, so there's <laughs> chainsaws. <laughs> and we didn't notice at the time, but there's a tree right here that's dead. It's going to make perfect firewood. But unfortunately, Eddie is parked right here. Pull that, you can hook it up to the other one. There you go. You good? <laughs> well, no, I got the winch too. Yeah, okay. I no, no, I got the winch. winch. It probably used a winch and back it up. No, no, yeah, we got the, the winch has got a long cable on it. Yeah, yeah. No, so, what we're going to do, there. yeah, exactly. He's yeah. going to be way up there. <laughs> and we're going to tie this up here. And then I'm going to hack her down. Angus is going to bring the grizzly over. See once it starts going, okay. You want to let it out more and back up. Alright guys. Ready buddy? So I was getting ready to pull out the Slido kitchen for Eddie and uh, cook up some dinner and barbecue some sausages and stuff and Matt really wanted to cook over a fire and, and yet he was uh, 
making a point of how hungry he was and the immediacy of eating was really important. So I said, all right, fine, get a fire going. So this is what we're going to be cooking over. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> so in a few hours when those coals are nice and hot and sunken down, we'll be uh, having some grilled sausage. Mm -mm. <laughs> ah, people with vans. What are you going to do? <laughs> so here's Matt's fire that we were going to be cooking our sausages on. And that's actually where the sausages are currently cooking. <laughs> I got coffee, but did you grind some or? Yeah, yeah. It, I just it's Using fine. It for yourself? Yeah, like I got tons. I got a big bag, but it's it's uh it's not Starbucks coffee. But, uh, <laughs> awesome. This, this this is getting too complicated. I just want coffee and more in here. No. So we're just gonna use this. I'll let you use your cheap ass coffee, and we'll all be good. <laughs> or measure the just the right amount. <laughs> might not be a bad day to go fishing. No, no, absolutely. It's, it's never a bad day to go fishing. Yeah. So what? what is our plan to go fishing? That's what we need to discuss. I'm wearing the fishing shirt today. I, I, <laughs> well, that, there's got to be more to your plan than that. Nope, nope, that's it. No, I put the fishing shirt on and that's it. Let's go. You know, does this want to be the morning where after a coffee and some breakfast, we go exploring a little bit? I was going to go do like a little four wheel on some of the immediate lakes mm -hmm. and just see go down to the trails and see what the mm -hmm. access is instead of um I'm not sure well i'm not sure on any of this like for the, the lakes right like i kind of told you that going into this <laughs> well good morning normally on a trip like this first thing i would do the weather's nice i would pull out the slido kitchen and, and do a nice big breakfast um but i have something to share with you for this trip i've been camping all my life and 99 percent of that camping has been in tents and the biggest excitement I have on this trip is I have my electrical system done. So my Battleborn battery system, I'll show you a little bit later, is uh, is up and running now, finally. I've been spinning my wheels for months doing it. And uh, so it's not completely done, but I have a couple of outlets, the lights. And most excitingly, um, this thing now has so much power that I have a toaster with me. So for the first time ever, I'm going to be having toast uh, off the grid. Like, you know, we're in the middle of nowhere. Um, no cell reception, um, there's just nothing around. We're going purely on the batteries. So we got in last night around four by the time we set up. Uh, it's morning now for some breakfast, but we ran. Uh, Angus brought a uh, kind of a mobile cooler that uh, I've had plugged in. So that's run since we've got here. Ran the Max Air Fan all last night and we've the lights have been on and off. And uh, we, I've only used 15% uh, of the power of the batteries and uh, we're not going to need to run the cooler much longer and i don't know quite frankly it's not like a dometic i think dometics are really efficient this one's on the cheaper end of things so it's probably drawing more power than um, like some of the better ones might so let's uh peanut butter and jam for breakfast and some coffee i'm excited about that only because i have never been able to do it out in the woods So just to give you an idea, as soon as I plug in the toaster, I'll show this up there. So this is the power consumption. So with the toaster running 80 amp hours, over 1000 watts of power it's drawing, just for the toaster. So, 
I don't think it's ever been worthy to film peanut butter and jam, or actually almond butter and jam, for a breakfast outdoors. But again, running a toaster with this setup and being where we are is a, is a luxury for me. Hmm. Oh man, so good. It's tough packing, and I wouldn't rely on somebody packing for me on a trip either. It's kind of well, you I did. I'm just joking. That's the only thing I brought was power. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're going to be disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> There's a good sized lake it's just on the edge of this. This seems to be the end of the path. But we're out exploring, looking for places to, to go fishing. So Matt got his van down here, and that's the end of the road. But on the map, we're really close to a lake. All right, we actually debated whether to pack up camp and move here because it's such a nice spot. But we're not far from our camp. We got it set up, so we're going to kind of stay here. Um, this is as far as we can get Matt's van. So Matt's got some nice fishing kayaks, but they're heavy. And uh, we have to hike them down the edge of this uh, hill, which is pretty steep in places. So this will be some work. Getting these down will be some work. We're gonna be here for uh, three more days in this spot. So we're gonna just stash them down at the uh, lake. And we won't, we'll only have to do this to bring them up the one time. So that won't be too bad. And um, I'm gonna get my pack boat and uh, bring it down here as well. So we'll, we'll spend uh, some time fishing on this lake and exploring it. And then I might hop on the ATV and go see if we can find some more uh, gem spots like this. So this is the path we found down to the lake. Basically an old abandoned ATV trail. And it kind of stops right here as a an old, old fire pit that somebody used that really kind of dies right here. And we started uh, started bushwhacking right around here. So you can see it comes to an end right there. So we dragged the kayaks down here. Getting them down was the easy part. Getting them up would be fun.
All right, so I just caught up with uh, Matt and Angus. We're just, they got the uh, the nice fishing kayaks. Matt caught us some nice smallmouth. Angus did, yeah. And then, look at that. And then Gusmo. Yo. Look at that, man. First time fishing in... Uh... 40 years. <laughs> <laughs> And he's already got one on his stringer. So for me personally, getting these guys out here and uh, especially Angus, just kind of being able to relax and actually have him catch a fish on the first lake we got to is, is really cool. So uh, I'm going to paddle around because I'm, uh, I'm wiped after doing all this and um, let these guys catch more dinner. Yeah. You know, just fish for smallies. The trout are tough to catch this time of year. That's all it's all about, man. I'm gonna balance yeah, with the wind here. This is a nice little shoreline for smallies. So I just replaced the battery in my GoPro here. Just caught one. Got a nice one. And I'm guessing I will probably catch one on this cast right here. So you saw that. Let's see if I get one, because this looks like a pretty nice spot. Oh, <laughs> there we go. That, he took that one as soon as he hit the water. Ooh, it's a good one too. Did all right. Not bad. Way to go, buddy. <laughs> Angus has got a stringer full too, so I think that's. Uh, I don't know how much Matt eats, but I don't. Know. <laughs> I eat. I'll eat them all. Don't worry. But look at that guy there. He's a beautiful. Oh, they're great and small. They fight probably pretty good, eh? Yeah. Nice. Van life minimalist. As long as my friends have everything else. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on, you know man! <laughs> All right, Matt did a great job with the fish fry. <laughs> Mmm, it was pretty damn good. Honestly, it's great. <laughs> yeah. But it's getting dark. I'm losing light. Mm -hmm. We'll put the camera away. We'll see you guys in the morning. a big communication guy of all these group chats and stuff and guys talk forever and like, yeah. I got nothing to say
this guy with his thumbs up again. Yep, <laughs> Wink, winky face and a thumbs up is all you get. Unless there's something that really has to get discussed. I'm not a big just talk for the sake of talking, dude. We have lift off. Alright. You know, he had one job. <laughs> it's coming. Yeah. It's coming. <laughs> My level right now, I guess it would be more of a mi minimalist uh, style, right? Like it's yeah. minimalist, not as good. They're almost interchangeable words, really. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's the perfect guy for you too. He just keeps repeating his stories. If we, we miss one on video, he'll put it. He'll say it again. Uh, all right. Well, good morning, everybody. We're uh, gonna cook a big breakfast. It rained last night. We woke up to a beautiful morning, but uh, the clouds are coming in, so I think we got a mixed bag of, of weather. But uh, we left the kayaks down at the lake last night, and. Um, we're gonna have some breakfast and go uh, do some fishing down there. Bacon and eggs are on the menu. Matt's first time using the kitchen here, Eddie's uh, kitchen. Well, things time. are things are warm around here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah we just leather gloves. I give him, and he burned himself five minutes later. Hmm. <laughs> Bad breakfast, everybody? Yeah, really good. Oh, good. I mean, that would have helped you with the heavy one, but someone's got to film this. But uh, I'll show you how I have my boat strapped up. So I never did use the 16 foot prospector that I brought. We were able, I didn't know when I was doing this if uh, we'd be able to get Matt's kayaks down to any water that we found. So I wanted to have uh, the canoe as an option for Angus and Matt if we needed to do some hiking. But uh, luckily we were able to get his kayaks down there. So I never really had to take this off the roof. But you can see how it's strapped up. So these black pipes are remnants of my truck camping setup. And I've just run those across the roof with some foam. And all I did was strap these down. So all I did was strap those down with some ratchet straps and they are secured to the frame underneath the trailer. And then all I did was attach the canoes like I normally would to the roof rack of any vehicle. And they are pretty secure up here. Because of the foam, it's not really uh, any permanent attachment to the roof. The roof's still holding up pretty good actually. So there's the new Max Air Fan. You can see how they're attached. So 
So this is the first trip I've done with uh, the new tires on Eddie and the axle switch. So after the last trip, while I'm continuing to build Eddie, he's getting heavier and heavier. So the problem was with the Jeep wheels I had on here and the axle on top of the leaf springs, um, the distance between the wheel well and the tire was uh, dangerously close. So it was hitting bumps and it was rubbing the wheel wells and actually it was um, maxing out on actually hitting the frame. So when I originally did it, when it was just the welded frame, without the weight, naively I thought that would be okay, uh, but I guessed wrong, so I had to swap it out. So my son Griffin and I swapped out the axles, we put some new hardware on, so the axle now is underneath the leaf spring, and you can see, uh, you know, I've gained, uh, you know, quite a bit of uh, distance between the tire and the wheel well. So it's made for a uh, much better ride, much safer ride. Um, it seems like I got some controversy about saying how uh, you need trailer tires for a trailer. I'm not saying I'm the authority on it. Everything that I've done and all the research I've done suggests that you should have trailers tires. So ST, standard trailer tires on your trailer. A lot of people say they use truck tires and stuff like that. Obviously I use the Jeep tires, but what I'm concerned about now is the trailers getting heavier. These are, uh, I think they're rated for, um, between the two of them, 7,000 pounds. I'll put the link there to tell you exactly what it is. Because realistically the trailer is gonna get heavier and I wanna make sure I don't have any issues with that. This is a 10 ply tire, so it's gonna handle all the weight that I'm gonna put on it. And speaking of that, uh, the axle looks like it's starting to max out too. So I haven't weighed uh, Eddie in a while. I think he's been uh, eating well. So more than likely, shortly, I'm gonna be putting on a 6,000 pound axle instead of a 3,500 pound axle. But yeah, so this is it. And then when I get the axle, I'll be able to actually order it with uh, eight lugs. Cause right now I had a axle that had five, four and a half pattern, bolt pattern. I used adapters for the Jeep wheels, and now I also need adapters for these tires. So I just thought I'd give you an update if you've been following along with the build. This is what's changed with the suspension on Eddie. <laughs> All right, here's uh, here's our last meal of our trip. We've been together for five days out here, um, kind of sharing some of the adventures with you. Hope you enjoyed it. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. I really appreciate it. If you haven't already done so, subscribe. Adventures like this coming up. I like mixing it up with myself, my dogs, uh, close friends, family, and uh, that's kind of what uh, I'm trying to create for you guys so you can enjoy and get inspired to come on some of these adventures uh, yourself. So. Angus, thanks, buddy. Matt, thanks for coming along. No problems. And we're going to have a nice dinner here, sit by the fire, and that's going to wrap up the video. Thanks for watching. Cheers. No more beans. <laughs>